I am Lisa Rowe. I teach the middle school program. That's seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Um, and we use textbooks mostly in our class. And I brought one with me if anyone wanted to look at it this evening. Um, but because these people do such a lovely job before I get the students, I am able to sort of piggyback off the knowledge that they have already taught the students. And so um, we don't use most of the manipulatives here. Um, but we do use sort of pictorial representations of things they already have learned throughout their many years. So an example I'm going to show you tonight is factoring trinomials. And I'm going to allude sort of back to um, the lesson that Lower did because they learned about multiplication. And multiplication has factors, and when you lay out multiplication, it's an array, right? So for example, this is 5 times 3. I have 15 dots. When they do an array, it either makes a square or a rectangle. And when I look at this array, I can count that the factors are 5 times 3, and that makes 15. So they're really familiar with that. They know how to do arrays. So how does that relate to algebra? Well, we can use it for factoring trinomials. I'm going to try to do this in layers so it makes sense. Um, we can talk about, just like they did in lower, that a square, x squared is a square. <coughs> a single x then would be one rod, and a constant or a number would be a single unit. So we have a smart board in our room. So what we would do is we would, oh, can I make a little sign here? We would sort of make this on the smart board, okay? If we were doing 6x squared plus 7x plus 2, which is a trinomial, for those of you who still have algebra phobia, really nice trinomial, <laughs> and we would show that pictorially. And it would match the golden beads, so it's something they're familiar with. So this is 6x squares, 7x's, and 2 constants, 2 units. They would move them, using the smart board, because they're movable little objects, they would move them, and they would make an array. An array has to be a rectangle. So they would move it, and it takes a while. It's not something they can do right away, but they have to make a rectangle out of it. So they're taking the six x's. You see, if I made, if I drew a border around the shape, it would be a perfect rectangle, right? So they lay out an array. And remember back here, we learned that the factors are the parts on the side. Right? This was 15. The factors were 3 and 5. 3 times 5 makes 15. So in this example, where's my markers? In this example, here are my, here's my answer. So I'm trying to find my edges to figure out what my factors are. So my answer is 1, an x, an x, an x, a unit, and a unit because I'm matching my edges. Keep in mind the array, we just counted. One, two, three, four, five. So I have an x, an x, an x, and two units. And on this side I have an x, an x, and one unit. And that tells me that the answer to my problem is one, two, three x's, plus these two. That's the one factor. My other factor is two x's, plus my one. And that's how it's after a trinomial. So we're able to use the arrays that they learned, the squares that they learned, to factor the trinomials. Um, like I said, we do use textbooks, but certainly having gone through the program all the way through, they have a great visual understanding of that. I did another one up here in case anyone wanted to see it, but did that's the magic. Check, you know, it's the same know. thing. Okay. Um, I was just showing that the golden beads are the ones that we use. This is the same thing as drawing the board here. Um, we don't usually get these out. We usually do it with pictures. And that's it. That's the magic of factoring trinomials. <laughs>